Semiconductors, also known as chips, are the backbone of modern existence. Semiconductors power virtually everything, from missiles to microwaves, fighter jets to refrigerators, smartphones to the stock market. The chip war is another form of warfare launched by the U.S., similar to the many oil wars launched by the U.S. in Iraq and Afghanistan, but without firearms. Meng Ji, a reporter at China Daily Media Unlock Studio, made a comment. Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new video on the channel. Today we are going to talk about inside the US-China battle for silicon chip supremacy. 101 East. Hello and welcome back to Innovative Czech YouTube channel, where we delve into the innovative and transformative projects changing our world. If you're new to the channel and enjoy learning about innovation stories around the world, you've come to the right place. Before we get started with the video, don't forget to smash the like button, share the video, and subscribe to the channel. Now let's get started. In the 1960s, U.S. chip makers began to outsource some production to Asia. For American chip designers, Japan became the Asian factory. However, in the 1980s, American corporations were under siege because Japanese electronics companies, such as Hitachi and Fujitsu, could produce memory chips faster and cheaper than U.S. firms. The United States began a trade war with Japan. As alternatives, the U.S. chose China, Taiwan, and South Korea. They surpassed Japan to become the world's leading chip manufacturer. In 1990, the United States produced 37% of the world's semiconductors. Today, the U.S. market share is only 12%. America is in a bind. It is strong in design but lags far behind in manufacturing. During the same time span, China's share of the sector increased from nearly nil to 15%. That was an unexpected turn of events. The United States has begun to act in a manner similar to what it did to Japan in the 1980s. A set of rules was issued, the CJAPSS Act, as well as export control regulations. From $52 billion in industry subsidies to a Chinese investment embargo, China is barred from acquiring innovative semiconductors and equipment. However, according to a report by the American consulting company BCG, restricting trade with China could end U.S. semiconductor leadership. The ramifications extend far beyond the loss of U.S. semiconductor leadership. The United States, Europe, Japan, South Korea, and China. Each country has an advantage at some point in the supply chain. Removing one country or region has a significant impact on the entire supply chain. Gartner VP analyst Roger Sheng told Media Unlock Studio. The primary steps include design, front-end fabrication, back-end assembly, testing, and packaging. A single chip in your iPhone is the result of over 1,000 operations. In earlier decades, America outsourced its chip fabrication due to the complicated and expensive processes involved. When compared to the billions of dollars involved in developing a self-sufficient semiconductor supply chain, $52 billion appears tiny. It contradicts the capitalistic impulse to seek out the most cost-effective providers. No single country can truly achieve self-sufficiency in semiconductor product supply. Globalization has been a crucial driver in the semiconductor industry's expansion over the last 30 to 40 years. Shang elaborated. In October, TSNC founder and former CEO Morris Chang stated, If you want to re-establish a complete semiconductor supply chain in the United States, you will not find it to be a possible task. To facilitate lobbying on the Xi Jinping Act, Intel's Patrick Gelsinger, Qualcomm's Cristiano Amon, and a group of CEOs founded the Semiconductor Industry Association. During the first half of 2022, the top U.S. chip firms spent approximately $20 million. During the third quarter of 2022, Intel Corp. spent a record $2 million to send lobbyists to Capitol Hill, the Pentagon, the Commerce Department, and President Biden's office. That's almost double what Intel spent in the same time period in 2021. Intel is predicted to benefit the most from the act, earning up to $15 billion. A confidential dossier containing Charles Schumer's lobbying contributions was uncovered by Media Unlock Studio. Consider Alan Thompson, Intel's Vice President of Government Affairs in the United States. 
The name appears in the file as well. Key Street supports the Senate Majority Leader who led the passage of the Xi'IPS Act. More than a dozen of his former aides are reportedly employed by lobbying firms. In other countries, it would be called bribery and corruption, but in the United States, it's called lobbying. Main Xi brought this up. The passage of the measure was also cheered by arms dealers. According to a recent blog post by the Center for Strategic and International Studies, the U.S. defense depends on semiconductors and should meet China's threat in the semiconductor sector. Why bother opposing China when its technology lags behind? CSES is heavily supported by arms companies such as Raytheon, Boeing, Northrop Grumman, and others, as seen by who pays their bills. Semiconductor chips have grown increasingly important to the Bureau's operations in recent years. Chips are the modern economy's lifeblood, serving as the brains of every electronic product and system, from iPhones to toasters, data centers to credit cards. A modern car might include over a thousand chips, each controlling a distinct aspect of the vehicle's operation. Semiconductors are also the driving force behind developments like quantum computing and artificial intelligence that are expected to change life over the next century. For example, OpenAI's ChatGPT was purportedly trained on 10,000 of the most advanced chips currently available. The United States government stated its intention to damage China's ability to create or even purchase high-end processors on October 7. The reasoning behind the legislation was simple advanced processors, as well as the supercomputers and artificial intelligence systems they power, enable the development of new weaponry and surveillance systems. However, in terms of scope and significance, the sanctions could not have been more broad, aiming at a target considerably bigger than the Chinese security state. The key here is to understand that the U.S. wanted to impact China's AI industry, says Gregory C. Allen head of the Center for Strategic and International Studies Wadwani Center for AI and Advanced Technologies in Washington. The semiconductor stuff is merely a means to that end. Though disguised as new export rules, the October 7 controls really attempt to eliminate China's whole sophisticated technology economy, root and branch. The new policy embodied in October 7 is that we will not only not allow China to advance technologically any further, but we will actively reverse their current state of the art, Allen says. According to CG News, a senior semiconductor analyst at Evercore ISI, if you told me about these rules five years ago, I would have told you that's an act of war. We'd have to be at war. If the limits work, they may cripple China for a generation. If they don't, they could backfire spectacularly, hastening the very future that the U.S. is frantically attempting to avoid. The conclusion will almost certainly determine the U.S.-China rivalry and the direction of the global order for decades to come. There are two dates that will reverberate throughout history beginning in 2022, Allen adds. The first occurred on February 24, when Russia invaded Ukraine, and the second occurred on October 7. Despite their enormous complexity, semiconductors are, in some ways, relatively simple. Tiny pieces of silicon cut into arrays of circuits. The activity of switches known as transistors causes the circuits to turn on and off. When a circuit is turned on, it creates a 1. When it is turned off, it produces a 0. The original chips, invented in the late 1950s, included only a few transistors. Today, the principal semiconductor in a modern smartphone contains between 10 and 20 billion transistors, each approximately the size of a virus and etched into the silicon structure like a layer cake. Moore's Law, which noted that the number of transistors that can be put on a chip nearly doubled every two years, has famously summarized the rate of progress during the last six decades. Chris Miller author of Chip War and associate professor of international history at Tufts University's Fletcher School, likes to point out that if airplanes had advanced at the same rate as chips, they would currently be flying at several times the speed of light. No technology in human history has ever matched the astonishing rise of computing power. The person with the best supercomputer can do the best science, Jack Dongara, founding head of the University of Tennessee's Innovative Computing Laboratory, told me. Dongara runs the TELP 500 program, which provides a biannual rating of the world's fastest supercomputers.
China had 134 spots as of June, compared to 150 for the United States. However, the picture is not complete. Around 2020, China's submissions dropped precipitously, implying a wish to avoid unwanted attention, according to Dongara. Rumors of new supercomputers circulate in scientific journals and research announcements, allowing observers to speculate on the true condition of the rivalry and the magnitude of China's projected lead. It's striking because, in 2001, China had no computers on the list, Dongara adds. They've grown to the point where they dominate it now. However, there remains a critical vulnerability beneath China's strength. Almost all of the chips used to power the country's most advanced programs and organizations are inextricably linked to American technology. The entire industry can only function with U.S. inputs, Miller explains. U.S. tools, design software, and intellectual property are used throughout the process in every facility that is remotely close to the cutting edge. Despite decades of Chinese government effort and tens of billions of dollars spent on indigenous innovation, the problem persists. Domestic chip producers in China supplied only 15.9% of total demand in 2020. China spent more money importing semiconductors than it did oil as late as April, when the Trump administration put Huawei, a major Chinese telecommunications manufacturer, on the entity list in 2019. America fully recognized its dominance over the global semiconductor industry despite the fact that the listing was purportedly punishment for a criminal offense. Huawei was found shipping sanctioned components to Iran. The geopolitical benefits were instantly apparent. Without access to U.S. semiconductors, software and other critical supplies, Huawei, the world's largest telecommunications equipment manufacturer, was forced to struggle for survival. The Huawei sanctions immediately pulled back the curtain, says Matt Sheehan, a Carnegie Endowment for International Peace fellow who analyzes China's technology sector. Chinese tech behemoths run on chips made in America or with significant American components. Thank you for your attention, and I welcome your thoughts and questions on this complex and vital subject. Do you want to watch more videos like this one? If yes, please like and share the video and subscribe to get exclusive videos about how phenomenally China is developing and growing its influence. Your subscriptions and likes motivate us to generate more content, so please keep supporting us.